are back for another casual conversation with the classic. I am here with longtime friend of the page. You might have seen or heard him on at the MSG Network, Say Less with Kaz, the Mass Man Show for The Ringer, and even most recently on the WWE Peacock exclusive series, Evil. It's none other than Kazim, better known as Kaz. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. It's uh, we're we're less than a week away from Wale Mania, so I'm in I'm in full Wale Mania mode, just planning as many incredible moments and surprises and you know activities for not just the fans but for the for the talent and the boys and the yeah. girls and the it, it's it's I'm a little stressed, but yeah, it's good stress. It's good. Yeah, I can't say that. That all being said, I can't say I'm so grateful that you made time to come on. I'm really happy. We've been planning to do this for years been, now. We're finally I was about to here. say, like, there's no way I was I was not pushing this back past WrestleMania <laughs> weekend. I'm like, I'm absolutely sitting down with Justin. I cannot. We cannot put this back another year. Yeah. So I'm and when I say talking. years, I mean like we first talked about doing something <laughs> together in like 2020. I think I even hopped in one of your live streams. We're like, we're gonna do it. Yeah. We're gonna do it. And like, Either something was going on in my life or like something was going on at the page or you got super busy and like we finally made this happen and I'm grateful we did. And I know you're super busy, so I'm really uh, grateful that you made time to be on here today. Um, there's only two people, there's three maybe. I'm going to say Alicia two to one, but there's two other people I remember actually waking up really early to do this for and it's you and it's Emilio. So shout out to the East Coast. Um, I was about to say, like, we're, you, we, get, we get to it early over here in the East Coast. So yeah. you got to be on our Because I remember also sitting here with Emilio and we we're both drinking our morning coffee. And I'm like, I'm like, that's so funny. The only other person I remember waking up this early for was Emilio. And now it's you. And I'm, I'm like, just, I know you I, guys I, are I had to change my clothes. I got my morning workout <laughs> in already. Just drinking my water. Like, I just got off some calls. I'm like, no, I'm. Yeah, hour, I want to make. Yeah, I'm making this happen. <laughs> I want to make sure I brought that up because I know you and Emilio are tight too. I'm like, it's funny because it was you two that I had to wake up early for to get this done. Um, <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. Let's talk about Wally Mania, March 31st, Thursday, uh, the House of Blues in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've said it a bunch of times. I've attended two of them. There's been six. I've attended two. Uh, two and a half because I did pop by the one in Dallas back in 32, but I did not stick around because yeah, that was my first WrestleMania and whatnot. But the one in New Orleans that I came to. I have had my story about that one, how somehow I got my way to the VIP section and never got kicked out. Yeah, I like, like I see, I see you back there. I was like, oh, Russell Classic? Come kick it with us. Like, yeah, you know what? I just, that, that honestly very humbling for me because I didn't realize how many people – so that was like the first time like being in the wrestling community and I was repping my own merch and stuff. And I was like, oh, like there's Kaz. Wait, there's Smoke Desa. Oh, there's Jamie Ivey. And I'm like, these are all these people that follow me that I know, but I've never really met. And they're all being super cool with me. This is awesome. Uh, no, because you're like you have like the you're like the house of highlights slash bleacher report of wrestling, right? Like you have like that Instagram page that everybody it's 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 non-biased. It's literally just like, yo, this is a guy who just loves wrestling and has like the same sort of memories tied to him that a lot of us do. So I know, you know, that was kind of like my connection to your page and just the way you talk about your love for wrestling just comes off so genuine and so you know authentic which like a lot of people really think about it and which why I was so happy for you when uh, MJF name dropped you on that page. Yeah. That's, exa- that's, that's the same way a lot of us felt when we saw it. We're just yeah. like, yeah, man, like that was, I, mean, I know Sparks, he, he, he started his, um, you know, his, uh, his, uh, his mixtape that he did back in the day, the Sparks experience was that Macho Man photo that you, you Yeah, posted. that was the first other picture I ever posted on my page. Like, that was the first yeah. picture. We actually talked about that when he came on, and he's like, that's how I, like, found you. And it's so crazy. Like I said, when everyone used to talk to me, I never really – it's I didn't, like, put it together, but it was that Wally Mania event. I'm like, oh, everybody's real. It's all real people. Yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 and uh, experience is, is real, man. And, and with yeah. Wally Mania coming up uh, this, this Thursday – it's the first time we've really all got to be together since the New York uh, Wally Mania. I know last year, I mean, the year afterwards, obviously, COVID kind of took over all of our lives. And, you know, we had the indoor uh, WrestleMania. And then the year after that, thankfully, the good folks at uh, Foot Locker, we, we, we yeah. came up with a, with a great partnership to kind of keep the brand name going and alongside WWE and put out some incredible merchandise. And we're going to continue that partnership as well. Um, and then last year, while they got to pre- perform E to the Ring, which was yeah. kind of like our own little <laughs> Wale Mania in, in itself, but bringing it back 
to, to getting everybody in one place at one time to kick off the weekend with everybody just coming to have a good time is, is so important, especially everything that we've all been through the past several years. And especially, you know, the last time uh, we were all together. I mean, we lost a lot. We lost a lot of people, you know, like we lost Brody and we lost, you know, Shad and who's, who's getting inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame this weekend as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely it's it's it's, it's going to be a, a, I don't really know what to expect, you know, like I don't it's New York was so fun, but so almost easy in a sense because that's my backyard and i know that yeah. place like the back of my hand <laughs> uh i don't really know dallas like that but i do know the community of, of professional wrestling and hip-hop and you know we're, we're hoping that we're just gonna come and just have make sure everybody comes and has a good time man. well let me let me ask you that because you brought up professional wrestling and hip-hop and i know it's part of the story but what was the inception of wally Mina? like what made you guys come up with it how did it begin man wally and myself have been friends for a long time ever since i yeah. was at the Source magazine, even before then, when I was in college, he came performed at my school. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're Nigerian, I'm Nigerian, blah, 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 blah. And we had a, <laughs> a connection there. And then, uh, you know, for, for years we had been friends and we had all these things in common. And we'd, all, we, we'd see each other at like All-Star Weekend and like the Super Bowl and like at other, you know, sporting events. And, you know, just as much as we loved that, we loved, we had the same, you know, passion and love for professional wrestling. Yeah. And then, you know, the, I think the first WrestleMania, the first, like, wrestling event we all went to together, uh, I want to say was, like, Night of Champions of Survivor Series. It was some, I think it was SummerSlam, actually, right? Yeah. SummerSlam. And we were just like, man, like, for an event this ill, there's really nothing outside of what's going on that's just, like, a good, like, time. Like, just a vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we need to take, like the vibe that we get from like going to all these like parties and concerts and, and, and events that surround like the mainstream sporting events and have something like that for pro wrestling. So um, the wonderful Court Bauer, who is the, uh, he, he runs MLW was one of the first people to kind of like put this Wally Mania idea in, in, in our heads. And he kind of ran with it for the first several years um as uh you know this pod live podcast slash fan experience slash concert that helps kick off wrestlemania weekend so the first wally mania took place down in san jose where court and you know a lot of his mlw guys uh at the time um helped host it so like it was him conan uh ray mysterio was i guess the honor Samoa yeah. Joe came through, Scott Hall came through, Jeff Hardy, Chris Hero, um, so many incredible talents uh, that we were just fans of and, and Wale was fans of and they were fans of him back, you know, and it was just this this weird like mutual admiration society, you know, yeah. with everyone for, the, for that first thing. And then that led into... Uh, that was the same WrestleMania 31 where, like, you know, the heist yeah. of the century happens. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was just such an ill vibe. We were just like, man, we just got to do this again. So every year we just kept coming back and trying to try different things to kind of just make it more of a party and more of an event. And then I think in New York uh, was the first time uh, I had I had just left WWE. I had just left the company. And I had a great relationship with a lot of the people there still. Uh, I left on good terms. And, um, you know, I, I told Court, like, yo, like, let me kind of like, let me, let me run this right now. You got yeah. MLW, MLW is taking up a lot of your time and, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and as, and as dope as that is, like, I think I could really help this out. So he's like, yeah, take it, let's go. And then, uh, it kind of turned into this much more of a, you know, loungy bar, which is going to hang out and talk thing to a full fledged event and party and something that I'm more used to. And that's what New York felt like. So I got to bring in my own DJs and bring in, you know, my own friends and my own influencers yeah. and folks that, you know, I had just spent the past year of my life with every single day, you know, on the road as a rest, as, as a writer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it wasn't so much like, oh man, we got to go through all the proper channels to get like certain talents. It was like, oh no, we're just gonna go support Kaz and Wale because those are our people. So, you know, the New Day shows up and Samoa Joe shows up and, yeah. you know, uh, Mustache Mountain shows up and, and 
Charlie Caruso and Corey Gray. And, and just it was just it just became a big, you know, everybody from every corner of professional wrestling just coming and just be like, hey man, it this thing started as no, it was a vibe. Life. It was a vibe in 2019 for sure. It yeah. was <laughs> Yeah, it was like, yo, this is our this is our give back to the and, to the and it was the road to Kofi Mania. So like everybody oh. everyone was on a high. We knew like even though we didn't know for sure, it's like we, we still knew didn't for know. Sure. <laughs> you know, like because here's the thing. So that was that was kind of done purposely, right? Like because every year yeah. we have a guest of honor. And that yeah. year our guest of honor was Booker T, who was going yeah. to the Hall of Fame for the second time that year. And, uh, you know, we brought Booker in and Booker was very aware of the moment. He was very aware of, of, the, of, the, of the groundswell of support that Kofi was getting. So as much fun as we were all having, when we gave Booker the mic to kind of like address the fans, he was very humble and gracious with, you know, being honored as the guest of honor, being a two-time Hall of Famer. But he was like, this weekend's all about Kofi. And... It was almost like a – it turned from, like, a party to, like, a Kofi pep rally. That's so basically what it was. Where, That's where it was what like, it was. he's got to win the title. <laughs> and then, and then Kofi shows up. up. There. And then Kofi and, and E and Woods show up. And, I mean, it just turns from a great night to an iconic night. And I'll just <laughs> never forget those visuals of, God bless him, Shad Gaspar – Picking Kofi up on his shoulders, <laughs> lifting him up, partying with Flatbush zombies and Wale yeah. and everybody, <laughs> and the crowd just going nuts. And it, it was one of those. It was it was one of the most incredible moments in my life, man. Especially looking back on it now, and then being there front row in yeah. that life stadium to see Kofi make history. And my my friends that I, I again I had you know we were we were already friends before I, I was working at WWE. Yeah, and then now I'm I'm in there with them. We're on the road together. And we're 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 doing programs together and yeah. eating together. And like these are my friends. So it was much more of a. It just hit so much differently for me when Kofi, you know, captured the world title against Daniel. And uh, man, I, I I could count on my one hand how many times wrestling made me cry. And that was one of those moments. I was just like. Because I, I knew, like, y'all know what he went through, obviously, but, like, it definitely hit different for me just seeing yeah. exactly what these guys have been through to even get to this point. And it almost, it didn't seem possible, honestly. Like, I had I had left around February. Yeah. And as of February, he still was not in the, he was still not in the world title picture at that time. Yeah. Like, Elimination Chamber had just happened. He had lost, uh, even though he had a great showing. And we were just like, they can't just let this slip, right? Like they know what they have here. <laughs> You're jumping ahead a little bit, but like the time you were on the writing team, like was it ever even pitched or talked about or even thought of? Well, we I've said this many, many times. My first week as a uh writer at WWE, um, I spent a lot of time with the road dog Jesse James, who was yeah. definitely somebody who I, I adore so much and you know gave me, you know took my training wheels off as, as, as somebody yeah. who knows what's going on back there. And he made no bones about it. He was like, listen, we're going to have a black world champion very soon. You know, like we're, yeah. we need to, we need to build ourselves to a point where that's something that happens. Um, I don't know if they thought Kofi was going to be the one to be that person, but you know, I was definitely aware of that, you know, we're going to be making stories for black talent. And you know, when you're making stories for black talent, you need to have somebody black in there that no, for sure, speaks yeah. the language and, and knows it. So um, in the ways that it was pitched, it was definitely something that I want to say Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, was always, always going hard to bat for. Like no matter what, even when it didn't seem super tangible or feasible at the point, he was always like, Kofi, we're going to make you world champ. We're going to figure it out. Even like when we'd have promos written about yeah. stuff. And it would be good to go. Woods would always add in his own little ad libs about making sure Kofi gets a world title shot, or you know, <laughs> Kofi's never hurt, and Kofi's gonna win the rumble, and we're all gonna win the rumble. And make sure Kofi made it better. Like he always slipped it in, no matter what the hell we what was planned for that night. He always made sure to throw those little nuggets in people's ears, like Kofi, it's gonna be your time. Kofi, it's gonna be your time. And um, yeah, man, it it, it just. I, I had my time had had 
kind of passed by the time Kofi Mania was full blown in, in full force. But uh, it, it was definitely something that I want to say the fans made happen. You know, like I definitely, I, I definitely believe that. I, I truly think that you know there was options there, there were plans to get there, and you know sometimes serendipity things happen. You know, Ali gets hurt. Kofi gets in there, you know, like it was so many things that weren't, that couldn't be scripted out. Yeah. That it was just like, you'd be silly to not just take what circumstances have given you and <laughs> make this the moment that you like, crowned like Kofi. It's almost like the the destination was made for you now. Yeah. Like you have it, was, to run with it. it was like some final destination shit, right? It was <laughs> yeah. Like all these serendipitous things just happened. It was like, yeah. It's Kofi's time right now, you know, like Owen said it, like Ali said it, like Brian said it. And, and you know, I've always said, you know, uh, one of the most one of the moments where I knew it was going to be Kofi's time was months, months, months back. And I always tell the story and I told the story with with Brian Danielson when he was on the Masked Man show on The Ringer. Um, one day, Brian just kicks the door open in the, in the writer's room and yeah. he goes, Where's the young hot baby faces in this company? Okay, I'm only thirty something years old. I can't be the young hot baby. Face. We need somebody, da, 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 whatever. And initially, after that, you start seeing Ali start to get that momentum, right? So I think yeah. Ali was initially slated for that big moment. I don't know if he was slated. I'm pretty sure he wasn't slated to end up winning the WWE Championship. Yeah, but he was slated for like, yo, we need somebody to get behind right now. Yeah, you know, and it just so happened that you know circumstances and like God just made Kofi in the New Day's moment that that lightning in a bottle that happened from January to to May, and um, it was incredible, man. Like I can't say that it was in the long term plans, but it's definitely you know in my uh, you know ex in my experience was an example of consequences and the fans coming together and be like, this is what we want. You know? And there's only so many times where there's like a perfect story. Like Brian was the perfect guy considering what he went through in 2014. The stuff with the Randall, Randy Orton. Oh, sorry, I called him Randall, my bad. Randy, <laughs> I do that with my friends and I was like, Randall, but I was like, wait a minute, we're, we're on the air here. Uh, the stuff with Randy Orton and like... Um, the whole stupid, stupid, stupid callback, like all that stuff. And this, like, I don't know, it was such a great moment. And honestly, a precursor to it for the people that were there that weekend was Wale Mania. Um, and look at what came out after that. Like, we've had Bobby Lashley as a champion now. We've had Big E as a champion. What did it mean for Big E to win the world title for you? Because I know you guys are close as well. Oh, my gosh. I I still have a, a good relationship with a lot of people in the company, yeah. especially especially Lashley, especially E, MVP, Kofi Woods you know, a lot of yeah. those guys. And, um, you know, I, he is a, a very good friend of mine. He's somebody I talk to damn near, if not every other day, every week. And he was definitely at a point where I don't think he believed it was going to happen. You know, like this is probably a little bit after WrestleMania, you know, yeah. uh, he was an intercontinental champion. He had just dropped the title to Apollo. Uh, but we had this great moment with Wale and the, and the entrance and all that type of stuff. And, um, you know, we talk a lot. And sometimes it's like, man, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. And then once I seen him win the money in the bank, I was like, bro, you just got to, you got to, you got to stay the course. Yeah. It's happening. I'm like, you see this, like, it, it's, it's going to happen. Like, you know, and then once it happened, I mean, I thought it was an incredible moment for, you know, not just him, but just like the fans that have supported him and followed him and just kind of know the type of person he is. And um, I, I was so proud of him. Um, I'm so happy for him. I know th there's been interviews and, and, you know, wrestling journalists that have probably thought that E's title reign could have been better. And I think E himself will tell you that it could have been better. But in my eyes, uh, I, you know, work on, you know, I do MSG network, I do other things. So like, I see how outside companies look at E and, you know, 
the way that he carried himself as a champion throughout the company, in my opinion, was as good as any babyface has done that in a long time. He was on college game day. They had the Iowa fucking the, the Iowa Hawkeyes have him lead out the team when they were like a top three team in the nation. Like he was at ringside with the Anthony jo- with the fight of the year with with Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Yeah. Like he looked the part, and he and he carried himself like a true world champion, and that brought so many new eyes, so many different eyes to the WWE. Even though maybe like he doesn't have like a standout feud or a standout match, or like you know there was definitely a lot of stop starts with his reign on TV, but outside of that, he did so much as a world champion to bring so many new eyes to that company the same way Kofi did, you know, like the same way. And and that's why I always go so hard for black world champions because, you know, it's one thing to have them on your show. It's another thing to, to, to tell competent stories, tell, make, make the, make what they're going through matter throughout the show. Not everybody could be in the world title picture. Yeah. understand that. Not everybody could be, not everybody could have some gold around them every week, but like, what are you doing week in week out? to keep people interested and keep people, you know, coming back to know what's happening with your character. And um, I think uh, that's, that's, that's all I've ever wanted from professional wrestling because I never really got to see a lot of that growing up. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a lifer, you know, I'm one of those guys who, you know, yeah, like I I grew up on, on the NBA and, and the hip hop and all these other things, but just as much as I grew up on all that, I grew up on Hogan and Macho Man and WWF yeah. and all that type of stuff, but I never really got to see people that look like me in those positions, in those moments, you know? So um, that being said, man, Lashley winning the world championship was incredible for me. E winning the world championship was incredible for me. And just seeing how they carried themselves throughout times that were unprecedented, being a champion during a pandemic, or getting people back into see all these things they've had to deal with all these sort of roadblocks that a lot of other champions never had to really go through and, in my and you really have opinion, a point there um sending well wishes to e to you because we know he uh messed up his neck and i'm hoping he gets back and better as soon as possible but um that being said like you just brought up a point like since you've been watching wrestling since you're a kid and you're a lifer when scott hall passed away and rest in peace scott hall one of my favorites of all time I was on Twitter and I was trying to make a tweet being like, oh, you know, like Scott Hall was like the definition of cool for me as a kid. And I was like, there's certain wrestlers like prior to the attitude era that I looked at and I thought were cool and I was naming these wrestlers. And I remember I went into one of my group chats and I was like, you know what? There really isn't those many people of color that I can name because that's that's not what was being portrayed on television back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm like, there's not many. Like, I was like, I was like, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. I'm like, I'm just naming a bunch of, you know what I mean? Like, and not, not for nothing, and not for nothing. Most of my life, I thought Scott Hall was really Cuban. So, yeah, no, really honest, that's fair. That's true. That's I was like, at least he got Razor, right? And yeah. I was like, when I found out he wasn't, you know, really like a, a Scarface's, you know, <laughs> yeah, a real I think Scarface. a lot of people, I think a lot of people still claim him as a, a, a Latino. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot. He's like been an honorary Latino his whole life. So, like, God yeah, rest but Scott I, Hall. That, it's. I'm I'm just really grateful how far we've come and where wrestling's come and like even for myself having someone like Jinder who was a WWE champion like that was super cool for that run even though that wasn't even considered one of the best runs it could have been but better, I, but, 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 but well here's the thing right a lot yeah. of times and and you know we're 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 lifers so we could speak to it right yeah a lot of times these great champions or these great moments aren't you know I don't nec- you don't necessarily remember a ton of those wrestling matches, right? Like yeah. I rem- I'm re- I grew up as my world champion growing up with Shawn Michaels, right? Yeah. Like Shawn Michaels was the guy. He had great matches. He had classic matches. But there's also great champions in between him where I'm like, well, Diesel was a champion. Where's your standout Diesel moment? You know what I mean? Where's your standout, you know, uh, uh, Yokozuna moment? You know what I mean? Like sometimes champions don't have these great, oh, he had like three yeah. five star matches in a row and blah blah blah. Like, and do you what, really I mean, remember the reign or do you remember them winning it? You remember the moment exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's yeah. that's been my whole thing. It's like, yo, they can never take away that moment from you. And yeah, if anything WWE does better than anybody is that they will create that moment that seems bigger than anything. So it's like, yeah, like maybe you'll have a little bit of a come down after that, but they'll never take away that from you. And the fact yeah. that, you know, in the past four years, you've got to see Kofi become a world champion. 
You got to see E become a world champion. You got to see Bobby Lashley become a world champion. You got to see Jinder Mahal become a world champion. See Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, like all these incredible talents of color, not just be put into like the secondary role, but be in place as a main part of the show. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, we've come a long way. We still have a ways to go, but I, I just knowing where we've come, where we're at and how much we need to do. Uh, it's encouraging to see that it's going to be a lot more diverse talent in, in, in yeah. professional wrestling. And we're getting a lot of first ever the first ever Irish born champion, the first ever Scottish. And I just, it just, it's a, it's a time of change and it's cool to see and be around for it. Um, but I just remember making that list on Twitter. I'm like, wow, it's really all the same. Now kids are going to grow up. You know what I mean? That that are big gaming fans yeah. and be like, yo, Austin Creed from yeah. G4 TV was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like Kofi Kingston. I was five years old when I seen Kofi won the like there's there's wrestling fans growing up where all they know is black world champions. No, hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's crazy. I'm happy that's, for them. That's crazy. That's that's incredible. Yeah. That all they know is is world champions of color. Like they have Samoan. Roman Reigns, you got yeah. Black Lashley, like all the, and it doesn't seem like much to a lot of people, but to those people, it's everything. It's 100%. everything. It's everything to me. You had one of the most thankless jobs in the WWE. You worked on the creative team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. How did that come about? And let's let's talk about that a bit because I, being me on the guy on Instagram, the social media guy that's engaging with the fans twenty four seven will always go to the defense of the social media team. And I think I've said this to you before where people will be like, oh, creative sucks. I'm like, do you think they're not on the internet and not read all the same or have the same ideas that we have, but they just can't get it across the way because that's not how it works over there? Like, I don't know why people think that the creative team are like brainless sheep that are full of bad ideas. I'm like, they think the same things we think, but like, right. it's just not the way it works. I'm like, I'm like, you followed my page. Like, you read all the stuff we're talking about all the time. And anyway, we'll talk. Like, I'll talk with you clearly like, know. on the road. Like, yo, <laughs> uh, it's not that simple. Um, yeah. I feel like this though, man. Uh, I, I love, I, I, I look back at my time at, 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 at creative, like so fondly. I've met so many incredible people. I got so many incredible experiences. I made lifelong friends at WWE and you know as much of a thankless job as I think it was um I enjoyed it I I loved I loved doing it like I loved being on the road I loved the pressure of being able to be like yo can we get this on the air can we slip this past this (laughs) what was the process like then like how you come with up with an idea so you come with an idea right okay yeah so all right so here's here's the process right like you get and so let's 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 rewind a little bit. This okay. is when SmackDown Live was on Tuesdays, right? So kick off 2016 ish, 17 ish. Right. So yeah. your day of the week kind of looks like you know, you go into the office Wednesday if you're on the road team. I was on the road, there's two teams. The yeah. road team and the home team. The road team is the team of writers that are basically writers and producers, and they will be okay. with you know the talent backstage at the writer's meeting, at the producer's meeting, the meetings with Vince, all that type of stuff. You're basically like the uh, the hands-on people there. And then there's the home team who are pretty much coming up with the with the long-term, big picture, you know, storylines, but they work primarily out of Stanford, right? Yeah. So I was on the road team. If you're on the road team, you come into the office on Wednesday, you, you know, sit down, you, you map out what Raw's going to be, you map out the 16 segments and the 12 segments for, for SmackDown. And then you basically put on a skeleton of what we think Raw SmackDown will look like, right? Put that together. You have until Thursday morning to come up with, you know, a, a loose script of, of what it's going to be. You, you reach out to the talent, be like, hey, this is what we got an idea for. Let me know what your thoughts. It becomes more of a, there's certain talents that would have been, yeah. you know, that are very receptive and are very like, yo, th- let's make this a collaborative effort. And there's other talents that are like, Okay, this is cool. And then they just kind of do it. Right. Yeah. And and um I never really ran into a lot of people who were just like flat out no. You know what I mean? Like I think it's only like I think the handful of people I <laughs> got flat out no's from about stuff were like the super duper triple quadruple OGs that can do that. Where it's just like, well, okay. Big Show said he's not doing this, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? uh, but 
most of the time it was either collaborative effort or a uh you know uh you know, just yeah sure i got you i trust you right yeah um then thursday comes you get that together friday you get your first draft and then you get the first draft over to the head writer at the time and my head writer at the time was road dog jesse james you get that over to him saturday's a travel day you get into the city you get in there sunday usually if it's a pay-per-view you the travel day is friday you get into the city saturday or whatever and then you work out whatever's happening sunday but for example's sake let's say you get in there sunday you're working on monday night raw you get to the last draft and then monday morning the night of raw the morning of raw you yeah get to a big production meeting when uh you know the head writer will basically read what the show would be about in front of the team and the team consists of vince hunter dunn um and i guess whoever is the head writer of that particular show in the front and then the rest of the room is like one half like legendary producers like one half of the room was like arn anderson dean yeah. malenko uh uh simon dean uh uh golly i mean uh sarah sarah Stra um T tons of people tons of people yeah. like anybody who's you know a legend yeah as billy kidman was in there you know what i mean yeah. like all these like great minds tj kid uh tyson kid um and on the other side you got the writers right and in the back you got the commentators because they got to know what's going on so then it's like graves yeah. renee cole all these people going through the show as you're going through it the vince is like this is good this is not good this is that, this is this. Everybody gets their say on what's good, what's not good, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And then basically from that time of maybe noon or one o'clock to about 6.30 when doors open, you're rehearsing, you're going through, you know, you, you go to the ring. If there's like pyro that needs to happen at a certain time, you're going through that. If there's um, certain camera angles or things in the production truck, <laughs> Yeah, take the script to the production truck. Like, hey, Mr. Production Man, at this time we need this, this, that, and third. Okay, cool. We can do that. We can't do this. Yeah. If there's uh, if there's something in the truck that you need, as far as like merchandise or props or all pancakes, if you're New Day, all these <laughs> other things, yeah. like you got to go that shit. Like, it's it's a whole process. You're a writer, but you're also producing a thing at the same time, right? Yeah. So most of that time, it's like you get your second draft, third draft, fourth draft. And then at the final draft is, you know, where it gets the Vince. And, you know, at most times, Vince could either say, depending on who you're with, right? Like most times Vince would be like, all right, this is cool. I trust you. Go do it. And if Vince didn't trust you, Vince would be very hands-on with it and be very like, you know what? Do this, do that, do this, do that. And, and one thing you can't, can you know, one thing about working with Vince is that he's still the most hands-on guy of everybody. Right. Like yeah. you would think like somebody who's accomplished that much and has in charge of that much and is that rich uh, would, would still have like people, you know, doing these things for him. But at the end of the day, the buck still stops with him. Anything yeah. that goes on that screen, it still stops with him. So you still got to sit with Vince and be like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Blah, 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 blah. Like, all right, cool. And um, I I'll say, man, like a lot of the times I had I had some good experiences, man. Like I, I got to work with some some trusted talent and and talent that really trusted me that put me in positions to look good as well. I mean, I loved working with like Kevin Owens. I think Kevin Owens is like so fucking. I was I was there in Seattle. I yeah, was there yeah, in Seattle. yeah. I was, was, there for <laughs> jokes. I, was I was there in Key Arena with the Elias segment. I was in the crowd. I remember I was cheering and booing and all that. I was booing for a very long time in that segment. <laughs> I do it all. I heard you talk about a Renee's podcast, start to Renee Paquette, but uh, I was like, no, I was there. I do remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're, I got, I got, uh, I, I was really lucky, man. Like, I came in and I, initially I got to work with Bobby Lashley, who was just coming back too. So yeah. I got to kind of like get that going. And then I got to work with Roman for a little bit uh, right before, you know, Roman announced he had leukemia and had to step away for a while. Yeah. Right. And then uh, most of that time, I'm kind of like doing stuff with the tag team division, doing stuff with like, Bobby Roode and doing stuff with you know the you know 205 Live like yeah. most of, you get more most more of your chops kind of like working the 205 Live show because there's less kind of strings attached. It's like hey man, just go ahead and do whatever you think. Yes, yeah. whatever. Right? Yeah. So like I got to work with 
you know, Leo Rush was just coming back and I had a good relationship with Leo and that ended up getting fast tracked to, to main roster because they liked what we were doing. Got to work with Ali a lot and some backstage stuff. Got to work with Buddy Murphy and, and, and work with, um, you know, uh, Tazawa and, and all those guys. And then, you know, I get to work with New Day and, you know, yeah. I'm with E and Woods and Kofi and it's just like easy stuff. It's easy yeah. working with them because they were so concerned about putting on good matches and still yeah. being entertaining that they trusted me enough to be like, yo, just help us be entertaining so we could focus because <laughs> so we could just focus on this match. Right. Yeah. Like that, it almost, you know, a lot of times they would tell me before I got there, like, man, you know, we would have so many more bangers if we weren't spending like 80 percent of our day going over like this funny stuff that we want to yeah. do. Right. So. Yeah. A lot of times I got to just be like an, a fourth member of New Day and just be like, yo, like, let's try this. Let's try that. Do you think we could slip this in? Do you think anybody's going to notice if we do that? Like, can we just do a, a quick little inside black Twitter joke that only yeah. like a portion of the fans are going to get, but it's going to go viral and folks will, will get the joke later. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to work with, with Randy Orton. I got to work with Jeff Hardy. You know, like I got to work with uh, just... It was it was such a like when I look back at it, it doesn't even seem like it really happened to me. It was one of yeah. those out of body experiences. Where I was like, damn, I was really like sitting in rooms with like Shawn Michaels and, and Triple H, like going over like Shawn Michaels comeback match. Yeah. <laughs> How long? Like, was, and I remember that that was the same night in Seattle when they came out yeah. at the end. Of the, the I remember I messaged you and you're like, I had to come out here to see this live as a fan. Like, and you were out there, and I was like, well, I think I see you because you want to experience yeah. the live just like the rest of us. And I'm like. It was crazy times. And you were only there for how long? Like six months? I was only there for about a year. I was there yeah. for, I think, like 10 months. Like 10 months oh, was wow. I was there for. But yeah. it felt like years because you're on the road <laughs> every single week. Every <laughs> single week. I saw Two the point question, then. Like, first question, what was the first time you feel like you got, like, because I like to ask this. Everyone always looks at him like this, like, you know, he's an enigma. But what was the first time you've got, like, a... A, a compliment from Vince McMahon, like uh, like that was a oh that was first a really day he thing. liked my suit, he liked the suit. <laughs> <laughs> first day he came in, like I, I, you know, I'm a little I'm a little bigger than the, a lot yeah. of the other writers there. I'm, I'm like six three, two two forty. So like I, yeah. I'm, you know, if if you if you look real quick, I probably look like enhancement talent real fast. So yeah, when I'm sitting in the writers segment section, you know, when Vince walks in, first off, Vince and crew. Uh, you, you're waiting on Vince and crew. You yeah. have to be there at 12. Yeah. Whenever Vince and team gets there, that's when the meeting starts. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the one thing that Vince and crew would do, whether he'd be with Stephanie, Hunter, Dunn, or whatever, is they come in and they'd shake everybody's hands. Everybody would, would get a handshake like, yo, it's good. Let's go get them. Like, it's like, you know, it's like your head coach basically like giving you the headbutt on the helmet. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like, you know what I mean? And then uh, the first time I met Vince, he came up to me and he shook my hand. He was like, mm, good looking suit. <laughs> <Just kept going. laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but as far as work was concerned, man, um, Vince was really complimentary of my work. He really trusted me, um, especially when it came to um, talking about certain talents and, you know, especially uh, black talents where I felt like I could bring a sort of authenticity that maybe – um, they wouldn't really have the opportunity to get, or they wouldn't really know how to get there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, um, so there were there were many times where, you know, I, I would come up with something, and you know, you could tell, you know, not that he wasn't sure about how it was going to yeah. be, but it was it was it was neither here nor there. Like, I don't think he really cared uh, as as far as certain things. And then it would go good, and they'd be like, oh, man, that was that's. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. the old proverbial pat on the back. And that's all you work for every single week. Every single week you're working for from Wednesday up until that Monday night or that Tuesday yeah. night. You're, if if Vince doesn't hit you with them, like one of those afterwards, <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh, like it was terrible. It was awful, you know? And uh, what, are, what are a couple of things that you were a part of? Like maybe quick with two like segments of things that you, or storylines that you remember that you were a part of that you're really proud of just to like give people an example of some of the stuff you worked on. Man, um, a lot of the tag team stuff with New Day uh, and the Bludgeon Brothers with, uh, yeah. you know, God Rest His Soul, Brody and, and, and Redbeard. 
um, was was really fun. Um, a lot of the Lashley and Leo stuff from the beginning when yeah. I, I tried to make Leo kind of like a Floyd Mayweather, a, a Don <laughs> King and a Floyd Mayweather body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and yeah. be like Lashley's hype man. That was really fun. Obviously, I got uh, one of my good friends, Chris, who was working there. Me and him worked together a lot on the Elias stuff. So like after like after Seattle was like a, a massive hit, every week we're just like, all right, what are we gonna do for this city? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, he was so musically talented that him yeah. and Elias would work together on certain songs. Oh and wow! Then, like, yeah. they'd come to me and be like, all right, like how can we involve you know this person coming in? Like we can't, we, we got to build up this Lashley Cena Elias Owens match, but we don't got Cena. How are we gonna keep this going? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to work on that a lot. Uh, I really had fun doing like 205 Live. Like 205 yeah. Live was just like, you know, it, there wasn't a whole lot of writers on there. Adam Pierce, yeah. who is now, you know, a, a huge, uh, you know, authority figure on air, was running 205 Live at that point. So I got really close with him and we got to yeah. have so much fun with incredibly talented wrestlers. And like, I'm a wrestling nerd. So I'm like, you know, I get to go out here and do stuff with like Kenta and 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 and, and, and Ali and Leo Rush and the, and Cedric Alexander and all these guys. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm, I've been fans of these guys for years. Let's get this yeah. popping. And um, you know, and just other things like I got to I got to you know help out on like you know one of one of the really fun parts was I got to help out a little bit on that Becky run, right? Like right okay, when Becky yeah. was just you know. And I, 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 the, the great Johnny Russo, who I think runs NXT 2 or helps run NXT 2.0 right now, was extremely influential uh, alongside Road Dog to getting that that first run of the man of, of yeah. Becky Lynch, right? And you know, I was there in uh, in the arena, uh, what, what I like to call the Ronda years uh, 1.0. When uh, Survivor Series was happening and Becky Lynch was as hot as fish grease and invaded Raw and put put Ronda in the, in the disarmor and got the, the, the nose all broke. And I'll never forget it, man. Like just sitting around that TV and just watching Becky Lynch just stand there with her nose great. busted and even though she looked hella concussed <laughs> while yeah. she was doing it, I was like, <laughs> This is a moment. I'm like, this is, a, and the next day, you know, we actually, obviously, we find out like she's she's really messed up. Like once we see her leaking like crazy, like oh man, like she's 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 in bad shape and you know, kind of messed up Survivor Series. But I think in the long run, it all worked out. Obviously, yeah. finds another happy accidents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, last but not least, man, I I learned the most from Paul Heyman. Right? Yeah. Like Paul Heyman was a guy, another person who I'd known uh, before my WWE writing days, just, you know, being around Wale and just being, you know, somebody who's tapped in with things going on outside of WWE. And, uh, you know, we're both New Yorkers, you know what I'm saying? So he was somebody who would always pull me to the side. And, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of OGs over there who were, you know, worried about what they were worrying about. But Heyman was a guy who always made sure to bring me to the side and show me things that I wasn't doing right that I needed to know. Like I needed to know how to properly time out TV segments. I needed to know the properly hit times for commercials. I need to know why certain things would happen. I need to know how Vince thought. Like he 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 was the first one to bring me inside yeah. of Vince's head and be like, yo, listen, this is how you get things through to him. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. Like Heyman was, I always call him the sensei anytime we, we talk because he really was somebody who made me uh, really believe in myself as a writer and as a creative. And, and even now, like to this day, we still talk pretty frequently yeah. and gives me, and he and he still watches what I do. And he gives me all the confidence in the world to be like, yo, dude, like you're gonna, you're, you're, you've got dreams that are bigger than just being a writer here. And he's like, I'm confident that one day we're gonna figure out a way to get you back here. So, yeah. Before. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, I don't know about that, but he's he's he is by far, you know, one of the one of the realest ones I've ever met, man. Just just no bullshit. Gave it to me straight. Didn't sugarcoat a lot of things, but he was he spoke my language, and that's why I really yeah. gravitated towards him. You still have a lot of ties with WWE since you've left. Um, you're still doing a whole bunch of stuff with them. As I mentioned earlier, you were recently on the Peacock original series, Evil. 
Um, I haven't been able to watch it yet, so I don't know how many episodes you're on. I got to figure out how to watch it here in Canada because we don't have Peacock here in Canada. I, I, I splash, I splash in, 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 I think, every episode. How was that yeah, whole man. process? How was recording that? Um, what episodes are you on? Where can people catch you? Man, uh, shout out to Dan Pucciarelli. Shout out to uh, um, Micah Brown, the director. Um, shout out to, oh, gosh, I, I don't want to forget all the names. I'm going to forget. My guy, Johan, who put me in touch. With, Shout out to all of them. <laughs> yeah, so my friend Johan, right, who I went to yeah. college with, who does not who does not work in WWE at all, but is just a big fan. Uh, one of his close friends was an ins- assistant director uh, for the docu series, you know, and they were like, "Hey, John Cena is producing this this documentary on bad guys for in WWE, and uh, we need like real different points of view." So yeah. I know you haven't watched the docu series yet, but it, it has. <laughs> it's you know we we you know we've watched wrestling documentaries our whole life, right? Yeah. And but this docu- yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and you see sort of the same sort of names and faces, you know. Yeah. You know the backstage guys and wrestlers and all that stuff. But this one is so unique because it's like you really get an outside view of not just you know professional wrestling bad guys, but just the psychological you know, what, what, what villains and, you know, go through psychologically, you know, whether it's insecurities, whether it's, you know, being bullied as a kid, whether it's all these, like Dr. Phil's in it, like Snoop Dogg's in it, like uh homie from Slayer, Peter Rosenberg. Yeah. Uh, they have like actual like therapists and psychologists, obviously. Yeah. And then you, go, you, then you got Stephanie and Roman and then Randy Orton and The Miz. And yeah. it, it's, it's really, really well done, um, and uh, you know, I got to shoot uh, for for damn near every episode, and um, it was really, really fun to record. The WWE and just professional wrestling in general has been like really good to me as far as uh, even in my post uh, writing days. I mean, I have a great opportunity with the Ringer and 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 hosting the Mass Man Show, and then the Mass Man Show being you know, a part of WWE podcast now is, is yeah. a crazy like circle of thing, but they still kind of like, we still kind of out, operate outside of this circle of WWE where we could yeah. talk to like AW guys and like other guys or whatever. And then um, it was, uh, it was, it's, it, you know, I get to do stuff for the ultimate show on Peacock, like, you know, and, and, and other things. And as a talent, they, they, they see what I've done outside of WWE and, uh, you know, they, I guess they see it as a benefit, you know, whenever yeah. they need some sort of like outside influence. I think a lot of times we can get really insulated in the world of wrestling that if you don't get an outside perspective of how this relates to the real world out there, you can't really put your best stuff out, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I love, I love anytime they, they hit me up and be like, Hey, we'd love for you to help talk, help talk about this and just kind of be you, you know what I mean? Like, don't really give me no, they don't really give me no scripts. They don't really give me, you know, any sort of parameters They're just like, Hey, just come out here and be yourself. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's fun. And, and they, and they, and they, they've done that a lot for me. And with this documentary out right now on Peacock, uh, evil, um, I've always wanted to be in one of these sort of things, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah. We've always seen people so, pop in into these and we're like, oh, cool, it's, it's, it's Rosenberg, it's this person. So like, yeah. Yeah, I've always wanted to be in one of those. So I'm really <laughs> proud of, of this one. And um, especially that it's produced by Cena. He's narrating it. And it's Not out awesome. the week before WrestleMania. It's like, there's yeah. no other... Yeah, I saw that one clip around you were talking about how he'd get into his character and he was like growling and growling. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I, yeah, I definitely need to check this out. I need to yeah. check this out. It's, 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 yeah, it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. Like, you get to hear, like, you get to hear Mercedes. You don't hear yeah. Sasha Banks. You get to hear Joe. You don't hear Roman Reigns. You know what I mean? Like, you get to see, you know, and one of my favorite clips is the one with the, with the Miz. Where yeah. I'm kind of helping to break down that episode of Talking Smack, where oh, you know, yeah. he kind of leans in on Daniel Bryan and how you know real how much, that was. yeah, and how real that felt, you know. So yeah. it was it was really cool, man. I really really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to looking at that. Um, you brought it up briefly, so I just quickly want to ask you because you were there when it was a black and gold. How do you feel about 2.0? I like it. Like, I, so here's the thing, right? I, I like it too. It's different, but I like it too. But people give it a lot of flack. Yeah, so here's my thing. It's easy to, it's easy and it's hard. It's easy yeah. to poo-poo 
on NXT 2.0 because it's different. And if yeah. everything you loved about NXT 1.0, black and gold, uh, has kind of like gone a little bit by the wayside or people yeah. left the company or gone to AEW, like it's, it's, easy, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to just say, we're going to start from scratch. And in less than a year, I mean, they've managed to put together a very entertaining wrestling show, right? They like they have, I love characters. Like, Same, I, I, like I, I'm, I'm, characters I'm, and storylines. Yeah, like yo, work <laughs> rates and and five star <laughs> matches and all that. I could do that all day long. Trust me, I love yeah. that just as much. But just the reason why I love work rate, and I think sometimes we 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 lose that. The reason why the work rate stuff is so cool is because you get attached to these characters and what they stand for and who they are on the inside, on the psychological level, which yeah. is why these moves mean so much, why these counters mean so much. Like yeah. if you watch a match with two people and then they have a rematch and like a move that ended up causing them to match, they adjust to it because like that's a psychological thing that like artistically is, is I, I love it. But yeah. you don't really get there without great character work. So the fact that NXT had, and, and, and Shawn Michaels and everybody over there had the, 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 the presence of mind to be like, listen, there's a new show in town that does what we do and probably has enough money to take people to do what we do best. What can we do that they don't do? And, and, I don't, and I'm just speaking on my answer. I haven't spoken yeah. about any of this. What can they do that we don't do? And what they've done is taken this balls of clay, basically, and be like, yo, we're going to create a whole fleet of new characters that we can develop for the next several years. So by the time they're ready to be on the big show, you've actually followed these people. One of the yeah. biggest complaints about NXT, and people like to act like it didn't exist, one of the biggest complaints about NXT Black and Gold is that they would be treated like fucking rock stars on NXT. And then when they would move up to Raw and SmackDown, it was almost like it wasn't canon. It was like yeah. they lived on two different islands. 100%. Now, now, the way that you could see them developing, it's no surprise that you have Dolph Ziggler jumping in and out, and it makes sense. You have Grayson Waller jumping in and out, and it makes sense. Braun Breaker jumping in and out of, of Raw and NXT, and it makes sense. Yeah. And now you're going to have that continuity from NXT to the main show. So you're not just being like, oh, here's this brand new guy on Raw and SmackDown that we've never heard of. It's like, no, now it's like, oh, this guy was a former NXT champion. And this story that we've been telling on NXT, we can also tell on a segment of Raw. There's a, oh, we can yeah. also tell a segment on SmackDown. And it doesn't, it, you don't lose anything, right? Like, yeah. I think that was the biggest issue with as good, as much as I love the TakeOver era of NXT, the big flaw was that that bridge to the big show was 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 a, a lot. It was in its own multiverse. It was weird because it was like yeah, NXT it almost became, became it was in its own. It, yeah, NXT kind of world. became WWE's like indie promotion that like yeah. you know, and a really good one. Don't get me wrong. And then, oh, I loved it. Yeah, I but like it. once they came to the main roster, like they wanted to re rebrand them and change them, and that thought that's what made a lot of fans mad. Was like well, no, now we're just starting them. We're building them from NXT. We're going to bring them up. So when you bring them up here, they're going to be exactly who you know that they are. And that's true. When it comes to the, the thing that they have always been good at is creating characters. And yeah. you can sit here and say you don't believe that or you dislike that, but you can't say that and still be a Rand Jordan fan or a Stone Cold fan or a Sasha and Banks fan. they're distinct characters, characters, too. Yeah. Distinct they're characters. Characters. I, could, I could miss I could miss like a month of NXT 2.0. And see Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams walk out and be like, I know exactly what those guys exactly. are. Exactly. Because I used to have this thing that I used to say what, what happened in wrestling in the past 10 years. And I'm because I'm a character storyline guy myself. That's what I grew up loving. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's like, likewise, like if the character and storyline, if you invest in that, you're going to be more invested in the matches. And if it's a good match, you'll remember it longer because you were into the storyline because we get so many good matches on a weekly basis now. Some of them you forget about two, three months down the road. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that happened. Because you get so many good matches. Yeah. If you care about the characters, the story, you're like, oh, remember that match and when they were fighting about this and this and that? And I was like, the hardest thing I started finding was if I was sitting here with a friend, friend who wasn't a, 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 like a hardcore viewer of professional wrestling, mm -hmm. and I had to point at a wrestler, 
And I was like, and they asked me, like, who is this guy? What is his character? And the only things I could describe that person as was from their nicknames or say they're a good wrestler. He's That's a good not wrestler. a character. That's not a, <laughs> well, he's a really good wrestler. This, what is that? Again, I don't know. And again, <laughs> like, I want to reiterate that there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I feel like there's, 100%. there's a whole section of wrestling fans is like, yo, I just need you to put on bangers and I'm good. Yeah. Right. But, you know, when it comes to, certain storylines like uh, for example like la knight right like la knight right now isn't in the world title picture it's kind of a veteran kind of been yeah. around the block for a little bit mm -hmm. kind of did his thing as eli drake and impact right now and you could absolutely see him being on raw next uh, the raw the, the the raw after wrestlemania and not miss a beat right yeah. like because you know his character you know what he's about you know what he stands for same thing with Grayson Waller. He's a dick. You know what he stands for. You know what he and even on the on the side of like AEW, what I see myself gravitating more towards are those distinct characters in AEW. Like I love Orange Cassidy. I think Orange Cassidy is hilarious. Yeah. I, MJF. I'm a massive so MJF not. fan. Same. Like I think you know who he is. You know what he yeah. stands for. You know what he does. Like Miro for a long time was my favorite AEW guy, God's favorite <laughs> champion. Like yeah. he's basically he's basically got beef with God. Like that's a, yeah. that's, yeah. a that's an amazing character he's trait. Still, to have. He's still fighting him right now. We don't know where he's at. Yeah, we yeah. still don't know where he's at. You know what I mean? And and that's what I love, man. And 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 I love bringing professional wrestling to folks who don't know really what it's about that's honestly what a lot of my work is sometimes like i'll be on msg network and i'll be on uh, other shows doing you know other things and anytime anything wrestling comes up it's like i could i could break it down like that because yeah. wrestling professional wrestling and sports entertainment and characters and storyline is in every part of entertainment it's in it's in movies, it's in TV shows, it's in basketball, it's in football, it's in yeah. everything. It's in the UFC. They every single great entertainment has taken something from professional wrestling, some storyline trope from professional wrestling, and have, have exploited it to massive success. And I yeah. think that's where I get a, a great advantage when I get to kind of go on these other platforms and kind of speak from that that point of view and being like, hey, listen. Everything's professional wrestling when you really break it down. And it's crazy because there's so many people that you wouldn't even expect from so many different forms of entertainment that grew up wrestling fans. And then once you find out, you're like, oh, that's not actually surprising. I yeah. see it now. Yeah. And it's crazy. I'm, I mean, you look at like Conor McGregor, bro. Like you look at the entire UFC. Like where would the UFC be without the influence of professional wrestling? They had to They had to build wrestling like storylines to sell the fights. And then I always think it was so funny because they'd start, they sell the storylines they just hate each other so much. They'd fight. Then after they're like hugging, I'm like, this they is wrestling. each other. It's like, they're oh, wrestling. They got out of the wrestling storyline. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, just the backstage. That's how you guys hated each other. <laughs> yeah, it's just backstage. They do the same exact thing. They know it's business. Like, it's yeah. business. Same uh, thing so the uh, you enjoy AEW, though? You're an AEW fan? You enjoy what the creative process yes. over there? What's going on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of AEW. I definitely think they're, uh, you know, for, for a company that's as young as they are, I yeah. mean, they've absolutely accomplished a lot of things that, you know, I didn't expect them to, um, from the talent to the story. Yeah. I think right now what they're getting a lot better at is telling better stories um, and, and getting me interested in things to their credit. I think what they did initially, they wanted to really be very sports-based and yeah. make like the records mean stuff and the titles are everything and TNT and AW title, <gasps> all that stuff. And everybody's got a title on that. And that's, that's good. But what really I'm, I'm, I'm really drawing myself towards is okay. What on this show that has nothing to do with a championship? Am I going to get, am I going to watch it for? And I said on the mass man show, the MJF CM Punk, Thing should be a case study on how to do these things going forward. I yeah. know you guys don't have creative writers on, or, or or anything like that, but whoever helped craft that should be helping crafting everything. The fact that yeah. you got like a MJF villain origin story tying in with the biggest acquisition that the company had, why it makes sense, why a person is this way. You got layers, you got nuance, you got reasons why people are the way they are. 
that have nothing to do with I got to be the best and I want to be the champion. Like yeah. people are human beings. Like when you could when you could tell basic human stories that end up in uh, now I got to fuck you up. Yeah, with <laughs> some depth, with good. some layers, yeah. Yeah, like give me some layers. Give me a reason why I got to get I think this a guy. part of it might be also two things. Like they did want to start that way, but I think they realized with weekly television – it's hard to do. You gotta hook people, you gotta hook people with stories. It's, they, yeah. You know, it's it's that's what wrestling is on a weekly television basis. And two, like the more you're getting these seasoned veterans coming in there that worked in other places, such like a Brian Danielson, such as a CM Punk, such as a William Regal, and, mm-hmm. you're, and you know, those cool are the people that are helping with those stories, I feel like. Yeah, I think uh with those stories that they're starting to tell, man, it's it's starting to feel a lot more like a multi-dimensional show. Right. Yeah. I think for the longest time, it just kind of felt like we got a dope, bunch of dope ass wrestlers and we're just going to put on some dope ass matches, which is great, which is fantastic. Yeah. It also lets me know, like, I can miss it sometimes. I can miss an episode or two. And that's a word. I, I say that to people sometimes. I can catch a highlight after because I, I, it's not like I'm going to miss the highlights. Because- everything. Yeah, there was no real progression in the story. So it's yeah. like, oh, okay, like I just catch the highlights of something dope. I could catch I could catch Sammy Guevara doing like a, a pop-up cutter off a ladder. Yeah. And be like, yeah, that that's that's what you miss. You miss that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh they're doing they're doing a great job right now, man. Like, I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm a fan of wrestling everywhere. Like I'm not like a you know, a WWE loyalist or AEW loyalist or yeah. indies loyalist and none of that stuff. I'm like, yo, if you can go. You can go. Like, yeah, if I hear something, I'm gonna go watch and check I'm it. Gonna out. Go watch it. Me, I watch it. Like, oh, MLW, MLW had this banger. You need to see this thing on Impact. Like, I'm gonna go out of my way and see it. Do I watch AW and WWE probably the most religiously for sure? But if you say anything else, like I'll go check that out. Um, one sure. last question, and then we're gonna wrap it up because I know you're a really busy man, and I appreciate your time. Okay. Um, WrestleMania is around the corner. What's the thing you're looking forward to the most? Man, um, we got two nights, we got a lot of good matches. We got rumors about Cody, we got a big main event that was years in the making. What are you looking forward to the most? Ah, uh, it's a it's a it's a stack show. I'm I'm really looking forward to Bianca Becky. I think Bianca Becky is gonna is one of the best built stories, yeah, uh, especially after this past week and seeing Becky Lynch cut that incredible promo. Uh, uh, this week, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to see how Stone Cold Steve Austin looks after 19 years. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I think he's. Do you want him to wrestle? Like, do you want him to come back and wrestle? I want him to be on that Sting schedule, man. Like, I think this is. Okay. I think this is what it is. I think that's. I think this is kind of like the first, you know, uh, a bait in front of the hook, right? Like, it's yeah. like we're gonna do something. We're gonna. Uh, we're gonna. We're going to under-promise and over-deliver, right? We're going to say, hey, Austin's going to be a special guest on the KO show, right? And you've seen a bunch of KO shows, so you exactly know what it's going to be. But if you get anything more than that, especially Austin saying, I'm coming for a fight, going on Rich Eyes and saying, like, you know, I have really – like, he's talking like somebody who's not just going out there for one night. Yeah. He's talking like somebody that's like, hey, man, if this goes good, what do you not want to see this man – in SoFi Stadium next year, would you not want to see this man at SummerSlam? Would you not want to see this man be on a Goldberg schedule one last time? He's still <sighs> farewell. Stone Cold Steve Austin is yeah. still. A, I was there. I was there in Dallas in 2016. That glass shattered in that place. The roof listen, blew off that place. I like, said this the other day. I said Stone Cold Steve Austin is still so over. His music made event to the Raw. <laughs> no, no, literally, he, he, literally, they played his music, and they was like, "That's the show." And I'm a little think, biased. I'm a little biased because I was a little kid that was at WrestleMania 19 in Seattle. Yeah, so oh, like, I was so there for Rock Austin, so I was kind of like, oh, that was such a perfect ending. And the Sean situation doesn't really sit well with me till this day. But, um, but I, I, I'm like not a, yeah. I feel like this. I think the reason why I'm really looking forward to Stone Cold, not just coming back this match, but you know, maybe a few more matches, a, a little run there. Because to this day, Stone Cold Steve Austin is still – one of the most popular sports figures oh, 100%. In, in the entire world, right? Yeah. Like from his show to his beer, like he's, he's a part of pop culture. You know, what yeah. I mean? this is a cold call, like all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's he's yeah. still he's still that guy. So it's like, yo, if he's in shape and he doesn't have to be on the road every week and do house shows, and we could see Stone Cold wrestle four times a year, yeah, a couple bumps. Why not? 
No, and I was okay. gonna—I was gonna say, you know, I'm with it if like, because this one kind of felt a little rushed to me personally. I was like, oh, if they put them in a match right now, like a month's build, like that's kind of a bummer. But if right. this was like the initial taste of coming back, so he comes back properly and we get a longer build feud, like I'm game. I'm game that's for what sure. It feels like to me. It feels yeah. like it feels like this is gonna be a little a little nugget where it's like, okay, you you get a little excited for it, and then you know he gets the bu- he gets the bug again, and then you know I think I think. I don't think this will be the last time we see Stone Cold in a wrestling ring. Uh, is Cody coming? Back? Is Cody coming? Do you feel like it's Cody and Seth? I think it's Cody and Seth. I think uh, I think what's what makes this really important, and I said this on the Mass Man show also, is on WWE's end, they've yeah. taken a lot of shots. Like over the past year and change, they've taken a lot of shots. They've taken a shot from from Jericho and Punk and. Brian and Cole, not so much Brian, but like from all these defectors, right? Yeah. This is the first time WWE is about to shoot back. So I'm really excited to see how they play this. Like I, I have, a, I have under good authority. I don't think he's going to be dashing. I think he's going like, to be the American uh, nightmare. I think that these past six years have done more for him than what he's done in his WWE days. No disrespect to legacy, no disrespect to, you know, everything he's done as as you know the the dashing one that started us and all that stuff i think him going back as this character that he created on his own and making him a, an actual straight up real deal main event the thought of cody showing up has gotten people to watch raw every week every like all week. these people saying yeah. like oh man cody's not it's just cody rhodes he's sitting there hyper cody rhodes i'm like listen bro if these past couple of weeks are any indication, Cody Rhodes is a megastar right now. And you save that megastar moment for WrestleMania. And you save that moment to shoot back at your competition by saying, look who we got. Look what we did for him. This one moment that he's about to do in Dallas in front of 100,000 people. The at t Stadium is massive. In front of 100,000 people at our biggest event. It's shocking. I don't think anybody Follow saw that. It. It's One of the PVPs, like it's shocking. I need to get you on the regular show because we can keep talking about the stuff. But <laughs> we need to wrap this up. Um, one last pitch. This is probably the one I'll probably post on the page right now. I'll clip it up. But what can people expect at Wally Mania this year specifically? Once again, I've been there a bunch of times. I know I can tell you from my perspective, guys. The wrestlers are roaming around. You get to meet people. You get to see people. Everyone's there having a great time. Um, you never know who's gonna show up. It's always like I didn't know Corey was gonna pop out last year. He popped out of nowhere. I, and like there's oh, you never know who's there. Like even the yeah. first time I went, I had no idea who's gonna be there. It's always a surprise. There's always I don't even know who's gonna be there. Like I'll, whether it's like a live podcast or performance, <laughs> there's always a live. There's always live content there. Um, and honestly, like and, and even on like a, a less happy, you know, like that was the last time I got to see Brody. The only interaction I ever had with him was like a nod to each other, like we acknowledge each other because he was trying to rush to the stage and I didn't want to bother him. Um, yeah. It was one of the last times I got to party with Shad in person. We did again after that one more time, but you know, like that's the guy that gave me an opportunity to do a podcast with him at the beginning of the pandemic. And I tried to be like Shad, let's build your YouTube page, and and he's like, no, let's do this for you. Like that's how giving he was. Like I want you to get something out of this, Justin. Like like I'm nothing but love for Shad. I'm so happy that he's being um you know going into the wwe hall of fame for the warrior award he definitely deserves it um rest in peace shad but like that was one of the last times i got to party with him too was at wally mania and that man was having the time of his life yeah, so, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's emotional for me bro like I yeah to, me and shad were, were really we're really good friends because we were both nick fans and yeah we talk nicks all the time yeah and uh obviously brody i, I was you know um I, i've told the story a bunch of times but you know our first i'm, I'm, a, I'm a father now my beautiful daughter ruby is, yeah. is here and healthy but um initially uh me and my 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 wife lost our first daughter uh shortly after birth and i was devastated and uh, a lot of people reached out to me and one of the people who reached out to me the most was was Brody because he had been through the same thing. And, yeah. um, you know, we were we, we would hang out in the writer's room, but we weren't terribly close, you know, but yeah. we, we would talk on Twitter and talk about like Duke basketball and stuff like that. But, like, yeah. you know, him reaching out um, always, always, um, always stuck really close to me. Uh, because you know I, that was one of the, the the darkest times in my life, and he really said some things, and 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 some things I'll probably never repeat. That um you know really got me through a really tough time, and um, I, I love the guy, I love his family, 
and and you, you can see just every the, the amount of love that he he left around so many people. So it's definitely emotional doing the Wally Mania, knowing he's gone, Chad's gone, Scott Hall's gone, all yeah. these people that I've met because of this event that you know, which initially was started to give flowers to people that we were fans of. You know, yeah. this is the exact reason why we did Wally Mania. So this year is it's going to be bigger than ever. It's in the biggest venue we've ever had it. We're in, it's in a, it's in a thousand seat venue. You know what I mean? We have an incredible partnership with Foot Locker uh, that we've done for the past several years. Um, well, it's the past year, uh, we're gonna have a pop up Foot Locker shop inside the venue where you could buy brand new um, a brand new run of merch that we're putting out dedicated to the women of WrestleMania, uh, we'll, which will have Bianca Belair, China, Sasha Banks, and Trish Stratus on tour shirts. Can't wait for you guys to check that out. Um, we're gonna have a live taping of the Masked Man show. Myself, David Shoemaker, my boy Emilio Sparks will be uh joining us as well. Um, and it's gonna be so much fun. We've got a lot of surprise guests as far as uh, you know, coming on the stage. Uh, we've got uh, we're gonna maybe throw in a little bit of karaoke as well. You know, I think Charlie Caruso stole the show uh, <laughs> last time doing changes by Tupac. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, this is this is something cool. We got to do this every year. So we'll have a little bit of that. And then uh, we got some incredible DJs from from Dallas. It's gonna shut it down. Wale, who's coming off an incredible year. Falarin too was amazing. You know, poke it out was huge this year. Uh, all of his, he had a bunch of huge records, so I can't wait for him to to perform those as well. And there's going to be a lot of folks in town that you probably wouldn't expect to be in town, but are definitely going to show up and are going to it's it's <sighs> buy your tickets on LiveNation.com. <laughs> <Go to House laughs> you're making me sad that I'm not coming this year. I feel if like you're the the last year trip and show up, man. I'll put it like this: if you're a wrestling fan. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, like if you just want to come and just have a good time. I mean, Terramana, shout out to Terramana Tequila. They're holding us down as well. Jordan Brand, we're doing an incredible collaboration with Network. And we're giving away a one-of-one one Jordan 6 Wally Mania sneaker, which you can only get there. You know what I mean? Like we got yeah. some great partnership with Adidas. Like it's going to be, it's it's the biggest one we've done. Shout out to Spotify. Shout out to Adidas. Shout out to Foot Locker. Shout out to Jordan. Shout out to Network. Shout out to Terramana. We got some incredible partners. We got some incredible people coming through. And it's the only way you kick off WrestleMania weekend, man. You come to Wally Mania. You have a good time. You drink a little bit. You kick it with your favorite wrestlers. You party. You dance. It's it's a one of one experience. I don't need. It to really is. Like I've said it a bunch of times. It's the best way to kick off your WrestleMania weekend. If you're in there Thursday, like it's the best way to start the re your weekend. The rest of the weekend will be a lot of wrestling, but this is like a yes. party. It's like yes. celebrating it's the weekend you're about to have. Thank you. Exactly. Like it's, it's yeah. a lot of wrestlers, but not a lot of wrestling. It's a yeah. good time. It's a good good time. So come on through. I'll be your host. Wale will be your host as well. Shoemaker, Sparks. Uh, you've seen some of the people we've announced that we can officially announce. Guys like uh, Swerve Strickland, Ricky Starks, uh, Jonathan Grisham, uh, Jordan Grace, uh, uh, EJ and Duca. Let me just let me let me read these out just so I don't yeah. forget nobody. I don't want to mess it up. Um, my man Kid Chocolate, DJ Poison Ivy be on the stage. Bad Boy Joey Janelle is coming through. DJ Money will be spinning. Darius Lockhart. Um, the Briscoe Brothers, Rocky Romero, Shane, Tam Shane Taylor Promotions, Kenny King, the Good Brothers, AJ Gray, Tasha Steeles, Big Swole, Chris Bay, DJ Q, DJ Shellshock, uh, golly, and I think those are the people I can officially announce. Uh, yeah. All the other folks, you'll just have to wait and see. The rest <laughs> of the hit makers will be there. Everyone's going to be there, guys. The hit makers will be there, yes. Yeah. Yes, Make yes, sure yes. you guys uh, get go to Wall. I mean, I'm telling you guys, go get those tickets. Where can everybody find you, Kaz? You can find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, slash Kazim, okay? Everything is K-A-Z-E-M. <laughs> And uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, uh, you could also catch me on MSG Networks, MSG PM after every Knicks and Rangers game. Myself, the wonderful Monica McNutt of ESPN, we host that all the time. Uh, I'm actually going to be hosting that tonight after the yeah. Knicks and the uh, gosh, who they play? I think the Bulls, the Heat, Knicks and Heat tonight. I'll be on there for that. Um, you can catch me every Thursday on the Mass Man Show on the Ringer Wrestling feed on Spotify with my man David Shoemaker. 
uh, and Jonathan Kerma. You catch my own podcast, Say Less with Kaz, Loki, and Rosie every Monday on youtube.com slash Kazim. And I, I, you know me, man. I'm 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 gonna keep working. I'll be I'll be on lurking the wrestling classic pages well. all over the place. I used to, I, I used to dub you the humble legend because I always see you doing stuff, but you're so nice about it. And you're just a friendly, friendly person. I really appreciate you always being so kind to me and always being so friendly. You make me feel special when I'm really. Not well, you are special, special Justin. You, you bring you, what you do. You bring you, you bring community together, and I think that's yeah. such an incredible talent even through social Thank media. You. And you know, the wrestling classic is definitely one of the most influential you know, Instagram pages uh, or just Thanks. social media pages for pro wrestling and you help curate that. So it's been a wild ride. I appreciate, it's been a that, I appreciate it. Thank you. I wish I was coming to Wall A Mania this year. I wish I was going to be in Dallas. Well, I'll definitely be in LA next year without a doubt. Make sure it's just as big. I'll be there. We'll figure something <laughs> out, man. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll send the jet for you or something. We'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure something out. But thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And everyone keep doing the thing. And I would be remiss if I didn't wrap it up with the, ooh, yeah, dig it up. <laughs> <Sorry. Sweet. laughs> well, man, Justin, thank you, brother. Thank you. Really appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.